What's up guys, it's Jay with Bearded Dad Fishing and today I'm starting the What's in Your Crate Challenge. And the way this works is I'm gonna share with you guys everything that's in my kayak fishing crate from my gear to my lures, my accessories, how I lay everything out and then when I'm done, I'm gonna challenge some of your favorite kayak fishing YouTubers to do the same exact thing. So if you wanna jump in on the fun, feel free to share some videos of your setup as well. But before we get to this, dad joke of the day, what do you call two ducks and a cow? Quackers and milk. So let's get it started with this crate. You guys may have seen in one of my past videos how I built this thing. So I will make sure I put a link down below to the video of how I built this crate. I've had it on the water for three seasons and it's held up perfectly. So it might be time for an upgrade next season, but for three years on the water, that's not too shabby at all. So on top, I have my storage and this stays pretty much the same year round. So I have a rain jacket with me at all times, as well as my safety flag when I'm out there. So this is my Yak Attack uh, 360 Vizzy, Vizzy Pole 2. And this thing is awesome, super bright, awesome when you're out on the water to increase your visibility and um, just make you safer when you're out there. I also have back here, and it's attached with a zip tie, is an extra prop for my Old Sound Autopilot 136. Because you never know when you're on the water if you're gonna hit a, into a boulder or a trunk or something and snap off a prop. So I always carry an extra one uh, with me. And when I'm on my uh, 120 PDL, I also have an extra prop as well. And that one is actually on the kayak. So now that we went over the top storage, let's open in and get into the guts of this thing. So before I talk to you guys about how I laid out my lures, I'm gonna show you guys my extra storage in, inside here. I keep this little wooden box, kind of cheesy, but it holds its value, right? So it's just a standard wooden box. And inside I got my miscellaneous tools. So I got my fishing pliers, my fish grips, floating fish grips, of course, extra leader line. So I believe this is 12 pound or 14 pound fluorocarbon leader line. I got my cutting wires in case I need to cut some line, cut some trebles, whatever it is. I also keep a first aid kit with me all the time because you never know when you're gonna need a first aid kit. So this is just little simple, silly things. So band-aids, uh, hand sanitizer, antibiotic cream, hydrocortisone, stuff like that. You just never know if you're gonna need it on the water, you get cut, you get hooked or something like that. I also have some hand warmers for those uh, early springs, late fall days out on the water. Next up, I don't even have a name for this, but these things have saved me countless times. These are lore de-snaggers, if you wanna call it that. So essentially, it's just a heavy lead weight with a snap on the end. And what happens is if you get snagged underwater, you have your lure snagged on a trunk or uh, something underwater, you position yourself over that snag to keep your line as perpendicular as possible to the water, so 90 degrees, and you put take that snap, you put it on your line, and you let it fall as straight as possible down, down the line to the lure. And every single time I have done that trick, it's taken me out of a snag. So it saved me several jerk baits and even jackhammer. So Again, I just made these. I got taught this trick by an old school fisherman, but I love this thing. So I always keep it on my kayak. Of course, I got my Rapala scale always with me. And one last hand warmer. So that's what I keep in the in internal section of my kayak crate. I also have some protectant, some block. That's super clutch in the summertime. And I usually have with me uh, off spray or bug spray as well, but I don't have it with me today. Before we get into the lures and the organization, I just wanna give a quick shout out to all my new channel members from the last month. So NL, Hamilton Bartles, RV Fishing Yet, Ron Whitney, RNL Walters, and the Outdoor Conquest. I appreciate you guys. And if you're not a channel member yet, make sure you check it down. I'll put it in the link below in the description and you'll get access if you join to exclusive content, behind the scenes footage, early access to my videos, some cool swag and other things like that. So check it out below. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this kayak crate, which are the lures. So most of this is lures and it's somewhat organized. I have it just by lure type. This is not lures. This is my repair kit. 
And this thing is absolutely necessary in my opinion, if you have a pedal drive kayak or if you have a motorized kayak. And what I have in here is just like miscellaneous odds and ends. Little screwdriver, I mean, anyone could use one of these. You just never know, uh, a seat could come loose, a rivet, something where you need a flip Phillips head, uh, as well as electrical tape. You need that, bro. You just never know. As well as a Sharpie for the tournaments. I got a uh, blue Loctite, the Old Town locking knobs for the drive. These you definitely need if you have an Old Town or whatever kayak you have. If they have their, their own proprietary type of locks or knobs, get them because you never know if it's going to break. I also keep batteries on hand. So you never know. Again, my remote control for my autopilot is AAA batteries. So I have two packs in here just in case you don't want to be caught dead in the water. You just float in there like a dummy in the middle of a tournament because you didn't bring extra batteries. And I also have batteries in here that I wrapped up in paper for my Yak Power remote control as well. And I have some extra prop nuts, uh, shear pins, and these are the Navar fishing floating uh, prop nuts here. So that way, if I have to change out my prop, which I already have right here, I can just untwist the prop nut that's on there and just replace it without really any extra tools. So I love that thing. So definitely have a repair kit uh, with you. Oh, and I forgot to mention the most important thing, zip ties. These have come in clutch many, many times where I might not have the right tool to hold something together, but zip ties was there for me, faithful to the end, and it held it together until I got back home. So definitely recommend a repair kit if you have a pedal drive or a motorized kayak. So now that we're done with the repair kit, let's get into the actual tackle. This is my terminal box. And by the way, there's eight of these and they're all the 3600 Plano style tackle boxes so this is my terminal tackle so i got my jig heads these are the the big boys three quarter ounce i have some offset hooks i have some weedless setups my uh my texas rig hooks in here i got the little jig heads the even smaller jig heads trebles my lead weights my drop shot weights and little miscellaneous things like beads snap swivels snaps and on this side here i have my offset smaller hooks and my drop shot hooks as well so i also have my soft plastics so my worms shout out to the soft plastic game I, oh i dropped my senkos too these things right here are fire especially i mean i love the crazy colorways but the wacky rig senko worm always there for me i got my my uh, drop shot worms i got ribbon tail worms i also got my 10 inch purple ribbon tail worms that is a no name brand i just got it from an expo a couple years ago but i caught my pb on it last year on a drop shot hitting that 10 inch worm up north bro that they don't do that often so anyways i keep that one there even if i never use it again it's emotional memento for me after the worms now i got my smaller swim baits and these are going to be soft plastics Kitek, of course, love my Kitek uh, swim baits. They just don't last very long because they get tore up. But I, I usually like Ziploc my own stuff so that I keep it separate either by size or color or whatever. And I just absolutely hate that soft plastics come in these big bulky packaging. And it just doesn't work great for these type of Plano boxes, but it's what I got right now. Again, more. So these are the ribbed style, but I also have some of the uh, smooth sided minnows as well. Of course, the flukes as well, and bubble gum, baby bass, different colors, watermelons in there, the dark sleeper as well, and the goby color from mega bass, as well as the, I think this is called the sleeper gill, but uh, these things are nice. They hit great. They're a little expensive at 10 bucks each, but I mean, they got some real good action and I lost the eyes almost immediately, so they don't last very long. They kind of supposed to look like that. But I use swim baits quite a bit. I probably get into this one more often than not. And uh, the soft swim baits are definitely one of my confidence lures for sure. After that, the last box of soft plastic is gonna be the creature baits. And to be quite honest, this is almost just like my generic stuff that doesn't fit into the swim bait category or the worm category. So I got my Yamamoto Yamatanukis in here. 
I got some extra type of worms I got as a, in a raffle. Got some Ned Rig lures in here, as well as some trailers, some craws, and things of that nature. So that wraps up the soft plastics. Now let's get in to the other lures. So I got my hard lures. I get into this quite a bit as well. So these are my crank baits and my jerk baits. Like I told you, man, I'm I'm not a super big collector of lures. This is this is what I have when it comes to hard lures out there and crank baits and jerk baits. So I do have ones that I love, obviously. Uh, I don't love that they're always tied up. This is not it. But this uh, these shadow wraps by Rapala are fire. These things always catch fish. This is the Rapala shadow wrap with the longer bill. So this is. Uh, four to eight foot, but I absolutely love this thing catches fish like it's nobody's business I also have a white one or I had a white one before I lost it to a tree a couple months ago But I also have some of the smaller jerks in here and some of them are just generic I got this one on Facebook marketplace for like two or three bucks uh, I got a Guggen one back here This one's actually nice too. It's one of my favorites. My buddy Kyle got it for me That's the thing about having fishing buds man. They just get you uh fishing lures for Christmas because they know what's up and this one is just a bass this blue one right here is just a bass pro jerk bait however I kept it because it landed me my very first and my only musky a couple years ago so I don't ever put it back on because I think it looks kind of cheesy but at some point I must have thought this is a good idea chucked it out there and got myself a really nice tiger musky so besides the jerk baits again crank baits in here and just different spoon sizes and depths this uh i believe it's called uh it's the rapala glass shad i believe it's called i love this is probably my favorite crank bait um i like that it has the slimmer profile as well and it does have some super wobbly motion there but that's a great one of course the berkeley flicker shad which is a lot smaller next up my big swim baits and i gotta put in some more time with these bad boys man but i got some of the soft body mag draft so this is a six inch mag draft um these things are pretty sweet man i don't like that they only come in light colors at least from what i've seen but i got two of them in there and i got some hard lures some hard big swims as well so these are actually from bigs custom lures and the artwork on these things is just absolutely bananas man he does a fantastic job uh, and he pumps these things out left and right he's always selling out uh, and this is also one of his as well so i have a third one inside that i'm keeping safe for now but uh, i got to put in more time with these because these things glide amazingly and they really do put in the work i also got uh some that were painted by my boy cap and hooks he did this foil trout design on here with even the red tail like a brook so freaking beautiful man i just got to get more time in on those and i got the rapala i mean i guess you consider this a swim swim bait it's pretty big but i'd like this one as well it's a slow sinking one i also got the one spin bait spinner bait that i own here in this box i have to get more of them i know and i have to really get into that type of fishing man because i know that they smash on those and i also got uh some of my first swim baits if you will i got these off amazon actually my sister bought them for me for christmas a couple years ago and, and i caught some fish down in south carolina with these bad boys so in the last part of the crate of course rod holders i got three and three and they're perfect for my impulse rods if you haven't heard about impulse i will put a link down below in the description and i have a 10 percent off code that you can use on every purchase every time you buy some rods on there you get 10 percent off period so make sure you use my code for impulse rods and they got spinner rods casting rods they got any length any power that you need they got it so now since you guys have seen what's in my kayak crate it's time for the challenge chad hoover and wendell fishing we want to see what's in your crate so until next time guys peace and god bless